Hello and welcome back. This is Yassine and today we'll be covering the topics of 5D, otherwise known as costing. So let's get started. We'll be continuing on from the previous tutorial where we created 4D data which will be useful for future demonstrations. Now if you don't need that detail, just grab the file and you'll be able to follow along. So head on over to the Blender Scene Properties, Costing and Scheduling, and then look for the Cost Panel, put it on top, and make this a bit wider. When you click on this plus icon here, write the name of your cost schedule and choose a predefined type. We'll be choosing Budget for the moment, so we'll press OK. Once you scroll, this will refresh and it'll show in the list of cost schedules found. You can press on the little pencil to edit the attributes of the cost schedule entity. If you don't know what one of these attributes means, you can right click and press on IFC description, which will give you the online IFC documentation description. You can click there and find it as well. Let's click on the tree like button to display the cost schedule tree view and enable editing cost items. We'll click on add summary costs, which will add a root cost item. There's not much we can tell yet because there's no identification, no name, no quantity, no cost value. So let's try and fix this. We're gonna change the code here to ec1 slash db. Then we'll change the project name to project ec1 5d tutorial. Click on this edit icon, which will prompt more buttons here, which will allow us to edit our cost item in detail. So if we wanna edit its attributes, it's as always just a pencil, you edit the attributes and you press on the tick button. So we're gonna carry on adding cost items in a hierarchy to create a simple cost breakdown structure. So we'll select a cost item and we'll press on add. This will add a cost item underneath it. We can then select this cost item and press on add again, and this will start creating a tree for us. Okay. Okay, so I finished creating my example where we can go into great detail, digging into 4D again, as well as review how to budget costs for subcontractors where we don't need to go into such detail. So let's add a cost rate to a certain cost item. We can look for cost items by searching with their name in this field here. So I'll use my windows and then I'll press on the coin-like icon to add a fixed cost. We can see here in the below the tree, there'll be a drop down where you can choose from some category or fixed. We'll keep fixed for the moment and we'll write 350 and add this value. This will effectively create a cost value we can create as many as we'd like, which will sum up the cost values. Ta-da! It should now be listed as above. So we don't yet have a currency and we can add one here for the whole project. So we'll set a currency as GBP for British pounds. We'll press on plus. You can also create your custom currency here. Just make sure you use the international ISO code for it. So GBP plus, and there we go we now have a cost item with a rate of 350 pounds. We'll now create a quantity for this cost item. So there are many ways to create quantities, either by counting, by deriving from building element quantities, by manually inserting quantities, by deriving them from tasks or from resources. So we'll start with the count we have our windows, which is convenient. So we need to search for window types of the type 01. We'll head on over to the project overview. We'll go to grouping and filtering, and we'll add a search group. We'll be adding two filters, one for the class and one for the type. We'll be looking for any IFC window, which has a type with a name PF01. When you press on search, this will select it in the 3D viewport. We can make sure we only have two. Yes, indeed. Ideally, this would be a larger project, so you would be counting many things, not just these two windows. Then under the tree, you'll find a cost item quantity sub-panel where it's split into elements, tasks, and resources. Under the elements, 
press on the plus button, which will not only assign your objects, but also count them. And now you have a subtotal. Amazing. Little tip we need to keep in mind is to look at these queries. When you press on this edit filter query, take note of this and we'll understand why it's useful later for automating these assignments. Okay, so how can we use derived quantities? For example, we're looking for anything which has painting and I know that the second floor has painting. My painting has the following name and it also happens to have some quantities. So we have a QTO covering base quantities with the width, gross area and net area. Perfect. I hope all the other objects have the same. So back in our project overview, grouping and filtering, we'll be looking for any IFC covering with the type name RMF01. Let's search and woo, we got all of this. Search again, we got all of that. Okay, so it's all of these objects right here. Let's go back to the scheduling tab and on the paint type, we'll look for these elements tab here and here we have a drop down with the quantities we can select from the selection. So we'll choose the net area and now we'll press on this property looking like icon and boom, it's not only assigned but we also have all the quantities taken up for us. And with the price of 45, we now have a nice total right here. So now let's look at how to create a uh, manual quantity. So we'll look at preliminaries here and management. So now we'll press on this property like icon and we'll look for a quantity type we can give. So I'll choose quantity time here and I'll press on plus. I happen to have a unit in my project. Go to geometry, units, and here you can add a IFC conversion based unit for days, minutes, hours, whatever. I'll use days, I already have it. Press on plus, then once you got it, press here to make it the default unit. And when we add a certain value for this quantity time of let's say 365 days, press OK, we'll see it has shown under the quantity column. I've given it an arbitrary cost of 10,000 pounds. So another way to, to get a quantity would be to use a task. Luckily, we have a work schedule with tasks that contain quantities. So let's say we want to use the excavation. Okay, I've selected my task here. I need to show my durations and whatnot. It's a five day duration. And does it have any quantity sets? Yes, it has one. Let's try and edit this. It has five for standard work and zero for overtime work. We'll keep it as such. Now, we'll open another tab here and we'll go back to costing and scheduling, cost panel. So with our cost item selected and also our task selected, we'll look for the correct quantity so we only have standard work and then we'll press on the assigned cost item quantity. So here we have a five day quantity which works just fine. We can also get quantities from resources. Let's now look for a resource. So we'll go to our resources panel. So I have four types of resources here, material. So I can add a construction material resource. We have an equipment QTO. Then we have labor base quantities and product does not have any QTO. We're just doing a material resource base quantity and we're going to look at this in volume, so 25 cubic meters of concrete. Now with this resource selected, I need to also select the cost item back here. So I'm going to assign this resource and I'll use its gross volume. And there we go. We now have 25 cubic meters there. Technically, you should have something for 
materials and labor and equipment separately. Okay, so the next thing I need to demonstrate is how to calculate costs from tasks with resources, which is the ultimate 4D, 5D workflow I enjoy. So in the 4D tutorial, we assigned building objects to a task. From there, we were able to derive the total quantity to execute that process. We used our resources with productivities to be able to derive the total scheduled work. And we also tweaked a few um, options to get some schedule usage of our resources. So my base costs are 25 pounds for this foreman and it's per hour because there is no unit basis. If I wanted to have it per day, I would write here the time unit. So 250 per day. All of these resources were assigned to a certain task. Let's look for it. We can see it's all of these resources. Now what we can simply do is select our task, then we'll choose a activity here called masonry. There we go, masonry. Brick ground floor, okay. And I'm gonna assign just my task and I'll press on plus. So now I have my task assigned and because they have these resources with base costs and whatnot, now I can just press on this calculate cost item button and I should have my total cost. So it takes into account my units. So if I change just this resource cost back to 25 pounds an hour, so I'll remove my units. Okay. And now I'll press on calculate again. I should have a different price. Okay, so precision does make a difference. We can also press on the enable editing cost value, which will show us a detail of the cost values that were attributed to this cost item. Right, so we're nearly towards the end. We now need to look at how to do sums. So let's sum up the architectural works package. For this, we need to create a sum cost value. So here's the sum, we'll add this. It still doesn't show much because it will sum up the applied value of its nested children. So we also need to take this windows cost item and give it a sum. And we'll repeat the same for external windows. There we go. Now the architectural works are 8,954. Great. So let's look at a last example of how to use formulas. And because this schedule is quite big and I don't want to confuse myself, I'm going to create a smaller one. We'll call it formulas. Okay. Scroll again, edit this, um, add a summary cost. I'm going to create a little structure. So I've added two cost items for which I'll give two different costs, one for labor and one for material. So for the labor, I'll add a category cost of 350. And here I'll write labor, add value. I'll do the same for my material. So I'll name this material and let's say 750. Add value. Okay, let's also add some random quantities. Right now, so for the parent cost, we'll add a sum and another sum, and we'll then edit each of these formulas to be material and labor. If you were to edit the attributes, you would read here that we have a category of labor and an applied value, which is basically just calculated from what we have down here. Now, we'll do again the same thing for the package. And now finally, for the root item, which is where I want to show my total with tax, I'm going to create another sum. And this time in my formula field, 
I'm gonna write labor plus and in parentheses just make sure you have them because otherwise it won't work as expected material times 1.2 so the operands you can choose is plus minus divide and multiply just have these parentheses otherwise the math won't work press ok and there we go we have a total with tax now what if we want to use a schedule of rates we can import a schedule of rates as well disable editing any schedule you were working on and then press on this button here so I'll be giving you these files under this course it will be on the start package so import cost schedule oh la la if you have an error this means you didn't press on a schedule of rates so press on that and then import your cost schedule scroll down and here you go you'll write it you'll see it written here change the name to my rates so this is what our template looks like and here's what was imported into blender bim so now what we can do is disable editing this and let's go back to our main project here we need to have a cost item selected then under cost item rates choose one of your schedule of rates available i'll have i only have one i'll choose that let's say this is in days and it's cleaning or or it's just bob so press on copy here and there you go you now have a cost item rate for running costs give it a quantity and off you go so the last thing we need to look at is how to automate all of this because creating it manually is time consuming and our time is precious so here's a template that you can use this is currently in ods format so you're gonna have to save it as csv to be able to import it what it has is the identification the name attributes for your cost item and then a quantity to assign manual quantities if needed with the unit and then three columns here well four columns for the rate you can add as many columns as you need to for rates then on the property what you need to have is either count or the quantity name you need to take off and then for the query that's where the selector syntax we looked at earlier while searching is useful because you're going to have to play around with this here to automatically assign well to automatically select your objects assign them to your cost item and also do the quantity takeoff you need on the blender bim website there is a description of how these queries work so you can just read this and you'll get a feel of how to write these so assuming you filled out all of these columns correctly and that you've saved this to csv back in blender bin you need to import this and this time don't press on schedule of rates import your cost schedule scroll down and here it is we're going to change the predefined type to be a priced bill of quantities okay then also the name final import okay I have too many schedules right now and there we go I think there is a small error we don't see the costs here somehow somehow some way yeah I need to fix something but hopefully by the time you use this you'll have used the latest version of blender bim and this error won't come up i'll see you on the next one